The UN General Assembly has passed a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. What happened during this vote? Taiwan is going to the polls in a month to elect a new president. Who are the candidates and what is at stake? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. The UN General Assembly has passed a resolution calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. The resolution was backed by 153 countries while 23 abstained and 10 countries were in opposition. Now, Unsurprisingly, among those who opposed the ceasefire was the United States. The UK, Germany and Italy were among those who abstained. This once again shows the decisive sentiment among countries across the world for a ceasefire and an end to Israeli brutality. However, the vote is non-binding and will of course not be heeded by Israel. We go to Abdul for the details. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. Yet another discussion at the UN General Assembly. Very much unexpected lines, but before we go into some of the details and who said what, what does the resolution say? Resolution has a very clear-cut uh, position. It is similar to what was proposed in the uh, uh, Security Council on Friday. Basically saying that there should be an immediate uh, humanitarian ceasefire and there should be release of all the hostages uh, uh, and it also, by the way, talks about uh, uh, access to uh, humanitarian aid, which, of course, is one of the ma major points. So these are the three basic things which the resolution uh, talks about. Uh, uh, basically, uh, during the uh, discussion, there was an attempt uh, by Austria and US to basically uh, put some amendments to these three points, primarily to indicate that there should be some mention of Hamas, uh, uh, both the incident on October 7 and related to the hostages. But both the amendments proposed by Austria and US were rejected uh, by the majority of the uh, people because it required two-third majority and they did not get uh, that required number. Yeah. Right. Abdul, in context, of course, what are the kind of positions that various, I think, key countries have taken? Let's start with the United States, of course, which everyone was sort of uh, looking at, I mean, we knew what the US position would be, but nonetheless, it's essential to sort of, I think also for history's sake, to sort of have it out very clearly. Well, uh, no matter what Biden has said uh, after uh, the session, uh, the UN General Assembly session got over, uh, and which is reported widely in the media that, you, uh, that he has apparently uh, called Israelis to listen to uh, the world community because apparently they are losing support and so on and so forth. Um, of course, this is uh, the strongest uh, uh, so far in the last more than two, uh, two, uh, two, two months. This is the strongest which the U.S. has taken a position in public when it comes to Israeli war in Gaza. But in the General Assembly, uh, they have stuck to what they, their position has been so far. They claimed uh, that their concerns about uh, rising uh, civilian casualty and uh, apparently they are uh, uh, upset about it. But at the same time, they want to kind of uh, balance it by saying that we need to criticize Hamas. We need to uh, uh, acknowledge Israel's right to self-defense and so on and so forth. On those similar lines, the U.S. has uh, taken the position. So it's voting against the resolution again basically was uh, with a similar uh, uh, statement that uh, it does not fulfill, the resolution does not fulfill, uh, the, uh, basically does not reflect the reality on the ground and we need to criticize Hamas before we talk about ceasefire and so on and so forth. So this has been the position. Um, as far as the uh, uh, other, uh, so in, in a way, it, it was a, there was an attempt to basically uh, uh, block the resolution in some way or another, which failed, of course. Right. Abdul, what about some of the other key powers that I think are important to register at this point of time? Well, uh, most of the other countries voted in favor of the resolution as they did. Uh, so including the permanent members, uh, except for UK. Even UK in this resolution in the General Assembly uh, uh, basically abstained instead of voting in support of the resolution. So the position has remained the same. But when it comes to China, uh, Russia and other uh, countries, uh, uh, they have basically, it seems they have been quite consistent 
in fact the uh, the uh, arab countries which basically were behind this resolution uh, behind this emergency session uh, while invoking the uh, uniting for peace uh, resolution uh, uh, egyptians which ref- uh, which basically re- uh, represented the arab uh, uh, groups group inside the general assembly talked about how uh, the so called arguments of uh, israeli right to self defense is bogus is hypocritical uh, it does not uh, because israel is an occupying power and as an occupying power it does not have that right so uh, invoking that right which uh, of course is not there in international law is basically an attempt to uh, tra- seek legitimacy for war crimes for uh, uh, in a, uh, it, it is an attempt to justify the killings of civilians and these are the words which basically uh, uh, were uh, uttered by the uh, egyptian uh, uh, ambassador in the general assembly and uh, uh, others of course most of them did not speak because the session got uh, uh, suspended uh, for uh, until friday there will it will resume again but uh, uh but the their voting and and their uh, earlier statements uh, in the security council during the security council uh, debate in the security council basically remains by and large the same that they do not agree with this invocation of uh, israel right israel's right to self defense they do not agree that there is any uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, possibility of bargaining whether the the condemnation of israel should come first or the uh, uh, the ceasefire should come first they have completely uh, 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 kind of stated that the ceasefire is an immediate need and there is a humanitarian situation which is getting deteriorated every day every minute and that need to be taken care of first and that's the position that most of the other countries uh, have uh, taken yeah and right, abdulan finally of course uh, you mentioned biden's comments Uh, does it look like the us is also feeling the pressure which is leading to these comments although like you said the votes on the ground the supply of weapons all of them convey a different message but at least rhetorically does it look like the us has sort of is is much more on a shaky wicket so to speak exactly there is a pressure of course there is a pressure not only by the world community but also uh, the people inside the united states uh, election is coming and they are worried about the the popular mood uh, which can uh, particularly the democrats are worried about the popular mood so both the uh, uh, pre- popular pressure from within the united states and the global uh, uh, it seems that more than 80% of the un members have kind of are in favor of ceasefire at this moment without any doubt that basically of course creates a pressure most of their close allies some of the european allies as of also kind of started speaking about a need of ceasefire and they do not uh, want to invoke uh, as us has been invoking uh, the right israel side to self defense anymore at this hour so given the changes and given uh, across the globe and of course the popular pressure created from within the united states the us government biden government is under pressure and this statement uh, by biden on uh, on tuesday is a reflection of that pressure which is building up i will thank you so much for the analysis we'll come back to you as developments further take place taiwan is set to go to the polls to elect a successor to tsai ingwen who has been in power since 2016 lai chengte the direct candidate of a democratic progressive party is leading in the polls the elections come at a crucial time when taiwan and the entire region has a huge geopolitical significance the results could have a huge impact on tensions in the region we go to anish to understand more a very crucial time of course taiwan has probably become one of the most uh, controversial regions in the world a lot of tension building around it so first of all who are the candidates what are the antecedents and where do they sort of you know what are the positions well uh let's begin with the ruling party candidate uh what we have here is uh, william lai uh he's the vice president right now and uh, has been a long time supporter of the saying way uh government obviously at her policies as well so he pretty much belongs to that uh, group of the dpp uh the democratic people's party that uh who are inclined towards uh you know trying to uh, create this new taiwanese identity as separate from the chinese identity which is not something that most of the population in taiwan are keen of 
uh, no matter how they feel about uh, the communist rule in uh, mainland, they definitely do not identify as a separate nationality. Most of them are completely averse to any such uh, position, but uh, definitely they have always tried. They have always tried to soften it uh, with uh, you know by playing up anti-communist tendencies, which is also widespread in many ways uh, because of various uh, propaganda machines that exist in the, uh, in the island. And then we have the Kuomintang, uh, the uh, the former uh, ruling party in Taiwan, uh, uh, who is presenting Hu Yui. Uh, he is somebody uh, who has promised uh, a more peaceful coexistence uh, with the mainland he has criticized the government and Kuomintang right now, while, uh, you know, using the platform of trying to uh, go back to status quo or, you know, uh, the, the, the status quo between the cross trades uh, relations that have existed before Tsai ing came to power, uh, it, uh, they are trying to focus more right now on the failures of the current government. Uh, in you know controlling the cost of living crisis and also uh, the failures during the pandemic because uh, even though the pandemic actually came uh, quite late on the island it did have a massive impact uh, in in later years and that th there was a you know very strong allegation of uh, mismanagement at the time uh, especially with not having procured enough vaccines and so on and then you also have another set of opposition party, uh, the Taiwan People's Party's uh, Ko Wen Jie, who, is, uh, who has always been there, who was always the significant third candidate in the past two elections and have often uh, you know, taken away a lot of anti-incumbency votes. So there has always been uh, you know, this concern that, uh, this, uh, that Ko and the TPP might uh, you know, spoil the election for the Kuomintang who has been uh, very recently on the rise and have you know taken back the discourse from just the sort of anti-China uh, drum beating that has been quite prominent over the past few years, especially with their victory uh, in the recent local elections. So they are on the rise and they are trying to gain power this time around. Uh, but we need to wait and see how significant, because opinion polls are saying something which uh, which shows that the ruling party is sig uh, significantly ahead of both of them. But uh, there was supposed to be a coalition between these two opposition groups, which did not materialize. So there is, uh, it, it, it is becoming a more, uh, you know, three cornered uh, election than uh, what, it, uh, what happened uh, before any of the elections in Taiwan right now. And Anish, also important to note that what is the sort of uh, global impact, or not global impact, but global influence uh, on this election because uh, clearly uh, Taiwan is not isolated. The United States also playing a key role as far as Taiwan is concerned. Definitely. Um, you can actually already see, uh, you know, both sides actually trying to play up a lot of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, this allegation of uh, the foreign hand being involved. And uh, and uh, in many ways, Taiwan is one of those places where, uh, you know, a candidate stand on international matters do have a strong and significant uh, weight when it comes to elections. Uh, in this case, uh, we have the United States uh, trying to militarize the region, trying to militarize the island uh, with multiple uh, military aid and weapons programs and, you know, arms uh, deals that, you know, contravene uh, existing policies and, you know, even international policy uh, customs of, you know, trying to not interfere in matters, which essentially is uh, China's sovereign matter, the matter of whether or not China holds, or whichever China it be, be, the, be it the Republic of China or the People's Republic of China, holds sovereignty over the whole of the region, which includes the mainland and Taiwan. And the United States is often trying to present Taiwan as a sort of separate country, separate entity, uh, which, is, which does not sit well. It has, uh, you know, created tensions in the region. And obviously, as we have talked about on this show as well, it has become this uh, you know, new. It's not new, but it it has become this very uh, sensitive flashpoint uh, between uh, in the tensions between uh, China and the U.S. and the U.S. and has become the sort of tool uh, for U.S.'s new Cold War policies against China as well. So, in many ways, you're and you have all other players being dragged in as well. We have Japan 
and South Korea and, and you know, the governments there, the presidents, prime ministers, they're uh, talking about Taiwan uh, very often these days. Uh, for the past uh, year or so, uh, the three countries combined have actually legislated quite a lot uh, in terms of the, and even, you know, brought out defense papers that have focused on Taiwan. And that is something that is quite unprecedented because even though U.S. has always tried to play up Taiwan against China, China uh, when it comes to South Korea and Japan, it try, they try to keep away from the matter uh, as much as possible. But uh, as we have seen recently, that is not something uh, that current governments, especially conservative, very, you know, more right-wing governments that they have right now, are quite inclined to. So these foreign players are also playing a hand. On the other hand, you have the Taiwanese government trying to use, uh, you know, any kind of anti-communist tendencies, uh, trying to, uh, you know, term opposition candidates as, you know, uh, agents or, you know, uh, proxies of the Communist Party of China, which is quite funny because Kuomintang was their mortal enemies of the, during the, China, of the Communist Party during the Civil War. Uh, nevertheless, that is being used quite a lot. Every, almost every day, the government is coming up with reports that there has been incursions into uh, the area to, uh, near the island, which we do not know how much of it is, it is exaggerated. There is no second or uh, third hand, uh, uh, you know, second opinion on this because there is literally uh, no uh, verification happening on that front. So nevertheless, they are trying to play up the regional tensions a lot and trying to turn away focus from their own domestic failures on many issues. And that is something that uh, that is quite normal. We have seen where many of the anti-China government and like how anti-China sentiments have been whipped up very often to take away uh, heat from their own failures. And this is nothing new. Uh, nevertheless, we have seen some level of traction on that because uh, and because of the existing anti-China tendencies that have always existed, that both parties have supported. So this is something, uh, this is the side kind of rough situation that we are at right now. We are to wait and see how things move forward in the next month or so. Right, so much Anish for that. And that's all we have in today's episode. We'll be back tomorrow with a fresh episode. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on all the social media platforms. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.